Yeah, you may start. Thank you. A uh, very good afternoon to everybody and. Uh, Myself, uh, Deepa Varma, along with my colleague Rohan Gavankar, are here to present our work. The title of our work is Creation of Canvas to Paint the Shades of Openness in Education and Viva Institution. Um, at the outset, I'd like to thank the OE Global uh, Conference people to have sele been selected our paper and considering our topic. I know we did not get good reviews, good points for it. But we've tried to uh, make it uh, uh, probably the whichever way we can do it the better way and so here uh, we both are here to present a policy project that we intend uh, to start at our institution and uh, what are the triggers when we talk about the project why did we in the first place even uh, think of taking this project up what we exactly want to solve here now, when we talk about our institution, before I start the triggers, I'll just give a brief about our institution. Uh, Late Shri Vishnu Vaman Chakur Charitable Trust is an institution which caters to students from kindergarten to post-graduation across various fields of education. Uh, we have a student force of approximately 35,000 students, and uh, we have five schools, uh, a junior college, higher education institutions catering to engineering, pharmacy, architecture, MBA, uh, applied arts, and any course that you think of our institution offers. But the intention of our president, Sri Hidendri Thakur, was to cater to the underprivileged and the first generation learners because our area initially was a uh, a rural area catering to most of the tribals as well as Adivasis also. But now it has become an urbanized place over the past 15 years. So the student strength has also increased. Still, the problem of developing quality content remains the same. So we want to solve initially for these 35,000 students that we cater to by coming out with quality content so that access to the quality content knowledge is acquired from our end to our students. Now, the triggers again here are not only the students, but the task force that we have, what we have. We have a task force of almost 1200 plus staff members that is teaching as well as non-teaching staff members. Why non-teaching is also important? Yes, because their help is definitely required when you try to develop your content in one way or the other. So our main trigger was to empower each and every one of the teaching as well as non-teaching faculty so that their contribution can be taken care of. And uh, this has helped us to actually develop a rough draft of our policy, which is definitely going to be implemented sooner. So when I talk about late Shri Vishnu Maman Thakur Charitable Trust, uh, the idea of Shri Hitendra Ji Thakur who is the president of our trust is inculcated in teachers like me, like Rohan, all alike. And we want to first uh, solve the uh, issues at home. Like we always say that charity always begins at home. So this institution is home for us and we wanted to solve the problems pertaining to our institution first. And then probably ensure that the model that we come out with, this model of policy framing that we come out with, can be duplicated or can be replicated by the other neighboring institutions as well once it becomes successfully adopted by us. So these are the triggers for us. Um, how we got involved into this open educational movement, now why now? Back then when I talk about how we got involved, I'm talking with respect to uh, Rohan and myself first. We hadn't heard about uh, what is open education resource or what is open education all about because having been a part of the traditional system of teaching learning process, Open education was something that we had never heard about until 2018 when uh, we got an opportunity to be a part of a workshop at SNDT under the able guidance of Dr. Jayashri Shinde and uh, Dr. Vasudha Kamal. That's how our involvement with open educational resources started. And then, you know, we thought that why not uh, try to utilize our expertise and expertise of people alike 
in you, you know channelizing developing content it is a slow and steady process i can i will not say that we have been able to achieve it in 200% but yes we are surely nearing there and then the second incentive uh, of involvement was through open education for a better world uh, mentoring program wherein me and rohan we both got involved as developers and we both individually developed a, a mooc uh, our moocs were not related to the topics that we teach it was um, it, it those those moocs were general moocs which could be used across anybody across the globe and uh, the involvement with oe for bw continued in 2020 and 21 as we will be continuing and it ensured that once we got exposure we have actually uh, channelized many others from our institution from neighboring institutions to join this movement of open education and mentoring program as well and then the third involvement was through the warsaw poland activity which was an open education policy forum so uh, it was like a slow gradual process first we knew about what are open education resources then we went on developing open education resources ourselves and then we gradually moved past in understanding how can we come out with policy framing for open education Uh, promotion of open education for supporting open education movement so this is how uh, me and rohan got involved uh, with the uh, open education uh, scenario and i think uh, i would uh, want rohan to take further from here uh, rohan uh, you can just carry on with the significance of the project sir um thank you deepa uh, am i audible Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, a very big namaste from uh, Rohan here and uh, Adipa, my colleague, uh, who is a friend for past twenty years, and um, I would say this project is a dream project. Um, as she rightly mentioned earlier, that uh, in terms of uh, you know reviews, we were actually scoring zero, and uh, that was a very Uh, i mean we really got upset and we just worked where we are really going to work upon so if i want to put in the significance of this project uh, before going into this i would just ask everyone to ask one question to themselves that finally when we talk about openness in education when we talk about uh, open educational resources or uh, advocacy of open education can we ask ourselves one question that whom are we doing this for and everybody will narrow down to one uh, single thing that it is for all the stakeholders maybe students maybe teachers maybe curriculum developers maybe a common man for me and deepa to take this project ahead was an inspiration from lot of our friends if i can mention few of them stage wise i would really uh, do it um, first i would like to mention uh, my friends and our family which me and deepa always admire and get inspired is uh, gino fransman and igor lesko it was gino's presentation at oe4 better world in slovenia really made us think that we are doing this for students because primarily we both are teachers we are academicians we are teachers our one to one interaction is with students so when we are planning for a policy our management gave us a full freedom to develop a policy from bottom to top rather than going from top to bottom so they said that experiment experience and then we'll develop a policy so if i want to put it as a policy for my institution i would just correct myself and deepa here we are no policy makers we are academicians who are hardcore teachers who want the students to benefit the stakeholders to benefit we want that our students should not only learn but they should be uh, consumers of knowledge and they should create this so this was a, a dream uh, which was inspired in slovenia by uh, gino fransman's talk and uh, igor lesko's constant motivation so when we draw the significance of the project when we went to warsaw it was uh, the entire central foreign team like alec carolina paul stacy 
and eba who really uh, you know narrowed uh, down to this uh, project idea because we went with a very huge idea for doing something you know all of us are somewhere a teacher and when a teacher thinks something to do for the students it's like they want to bring the entire world down so we went with the same idea but we narrowed down to a project where we imbibe something which will result into capacity building of the faculty members working in our institution so we wanted that we become as a model program or a model uh, policy to not only our institutions in the beginning but also to our sister uh, institutions uh, which uh, dr deepa already mentioned earlier and maybe uh, model to the uh, institutions uh, in our neighboring areas so uh, that was the scope we decided to uh, really uh, design for this uh, particular project in terms of resources uh, we always strive for getting better resources for our learner i i would Uh, not be surprised if all of us uh, vouch together you know when there is a good teacher a good teacher will be always into search of resources like it's like digging the mine okay and that's the reason we wanted to develop quality content which will be not only useful for the students in our institution but students across the globe if you could really uh, make a contribution of a drop in the entire ocean i guess we are serving the purpose what we are actually made for so in terms of resources we wanted to develop quality content and repositories uh, which will be uh, you know access across the world and maybe every learner or maybe any uh, stakeholder or somebody who just want to go through a certain particular topic so that was the uh, whole idea in terms of resources uh, in terms of time now uh, this is an ongoing project because uh, many of us uh, there are stalwarts uh, in this forum who are policy developers and experience in making policies but as i uh, said earlier as well me and deepa are no policy makers we are teachers at the end of the day we call ourselves as maybe from teachers we are promoted to some thing called as facilitators this project is going to be an ongoing process this is going to be helped by many people around we have uh, come across a lot of like minded people and developing now i would like alan prisi who have uh, given us time again Uh, during the uh, forum at warsaw so uh, it's a program which will uh, be you know uh, eventually progressing so here that's why in the title we uh, you know put it as uh, canvassing the sketch to have a road map for developing this kind of resources uh, ma'am can you go to the next slide please yeah um, and uh, as uh, me and deepa we have been not only friends colleagues uh, but we have also uh, involved in building a team because uh, no good good work uh, you know comes only with uh, individual or maybe couple of people it's a good team so this is our team working back end in viva who are actually promoting uh, the uh, formation of the policy process by you know conducting workshops and training programs we were fortunate uh, enough to have training programs uh, by our friend uh, mr gino fransman and igor lesko uh, we were uh, we could connect uh, with uh, dr deepas uh, constant emailing uh, to uh, jenrin uh, from the us uh, who works with creative commons and she was nice enough and kind enough to aware our institutional teachers faculty members to have a mindset change because if you want to implement something if you want the policy to be successful you need to change your mind and to change your mind you need to train your mind and she was very kind enough to accept uh, deepa's invitation and through the webinar in the period of lockdown uh, she actually uh, you know brought in how licensing uh, is carried out how creative government licenses can be attributed so a wonderful uh, workshop by uh, jenrin and we are really thankful to her as well so uh, these are our team members uh, you can see on the screen many of them have come forward and they have also presented in the open education for better, better world in 2020 in this uh, uh, at the event in slovenia uh, including me and deepa uh, during poland and in slovenia we met one of a gem of a person uh, mr spencer elis who is from the us and uh, constantly he motivates us uh, to really 
uh, you know, uh, put this policy in place. Uh, I now request uh, Dr. Deepa to take the presentation ahead. Dr. Deepa. Uh, when, it, when it comes to the uh, methods and the activities, uh, not talking much right now over here, I'll just move forward with the uh, slide. This is actually how we went ahead with. Uh, sorry for the overlapping of the uh, words. Uh, the phase one, as Rohan mentioned about uh, the, work, uh, the webinar conducted by Jenrin, we had a webinar by Gino as well as Igor. Annapurna Madhuri, who's a uh, dearest friend of me and Rohan, both of us. So all these people have actually helped our staff members first to understand what exactly is open educational resource. Because as Rohan rightly mentioned, we are hardcore academicians. So for us, whatever is li limited to the syllabus is something that we have always looked upon. We have given a different a viewpoint to our staff members of looking beyond the curriculum beyond that rigidity of the syllabus and to ensure that open educational resources can definitely make a difference in their daily teaching learning process. So expert webinars. And then once that was done, once the staff members were sensitized about these different attributes of open educational uh, movement, then we conducted training sessions, uh, hands-on training, or uh, teaching the staff members as to how to create content using various softwares. Uh, you know, there are smaller, smaller softwares which can help in developing good content. Phase three, staff members have created a substantial amount of uh, content. And then we move towards phase four, that is developing a repository. Now the repository is officially to be launched online so that everybody and anybody can access, but it is for private access by the institution and the institutional members. And yes, the rough, uh, draft, rough draft of policy has been framed it has been offered to the management for their final approval. As Rohan said that the management believes in bottom to top approach rather than from top to bottom approach. So this is the project timeline. We have reached the uh, fifth phase and it's almost done by us. So what has been achieved? Uh, highlight one when I talk about, yes, the status of the project is we have imparted training to all teachers across the sister institution. That is uh, the task force of 800, 900 plus teaching staff members has been achieved all, already. Uh, more than 300 plus quality content has already been created. But now this quality content has been created pertaining strictly to the syllabus that is being offered by the teachers. And uh, we are asking teachers to move beyond the syllabus as well. So we have been able to develop that kind of thing. So repository is already in process. And the highlight number three of the entire project is that the rough policy has been framed and we're just waiting for the management to approve it so that it can be implemented across all the sister institutions of our uh, charitable trust. So this is where uh, we have reached. And uh, I guess when I just have to sum up the uh, entire uh, presentation is like, as JK Rowling has said, we do not need magic to change the world because we all carry the power inside ourselves and we have the power to imagine better. So our team believes in this, that all of us are capable of doing good things, greater things and bring a change, make a change and contribute towards the open educational open education movement and become open education influencers, if I put it across uh, Gino's words, be an open educational influencer. So I hope uh, our presentation has been able to convey the meaning of our project and I stop over here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, you are just uh, at the right time. <laughs> So anybody from the field want to ask anything? Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, there were uh, a lot of people saying that uh, you have done remarkable job. Yeah. And uh, I think our, our times are almost up. So uh, because you will begin this session, uh, this presentation a little bit earlier. So we probably will end it uh, a little bit earlier because uh, this room is gonna uh, have another uh, session that will be in Delft time. 
so uh, we will close the session uh, exactly right now. Okay, so uh, everybody, if you've got any uh, uh, thing on to discussion, yeah, you may do that on OEG Connect. And if, if possible, please upload your presentation file on it too, so that everybody can uh, see it and uh, review it. We will we'll post the video later. So uh, if you have uh, anything, yeah, please go on, uh, go to the uh, OG Connect and uh, continue the discussion. Thank you very much for participating in uh, today's events. Yeah, uh, the Taipei uh, uh, session will be ended right now. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. See you, bye-bye.